Just waiting for everybody to log on. If not, then um, I am going to proceed by myself. Okay, actually, my computer got... Okay, actually, it's not even six yet, so um, we'll just wait for people to come on. All right, this is Murhutha Nudimud Kahagadul L. And this is a national conference call. Um, this is the month of Amun, uh, the seventh day of the month. Um, all right, brothers, those that are going to join the call. Rahu Bat Can you hear me, Brother Zozer? Uh okay, it looks like we're having some technical difficulties there. Rahu Basana. Rahu Bat Senna. Rahu Bat Senna. What's happening with you, bro? Uh, nothing much, man. Hey, I got the, I got the, well, actually, well, I am recording the call. Yeah, I heard when she said it, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, bro, how you doing, man? I'm doing yeah. fine, man. I, I just got something to tell you, man, because my phone is still not charged. I don't know what's going on. I had to make a whole bunch of moves today, so I'm not going to be able to be on this call. But I oh, do want to okay. okay. I did want to tell you that I took the guard to my mother's in law my mother in law's house. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> whenever my father whenever I can just sit and talk, I just took it over there so I wouldn't, you know, forget it because I've been forgetting it the whole time. So I just took it over there to, you know, leave okay. it over there. So when I talked to my father in law. You know, I told him everybody's going to get their own personal measures because it's going to be tailor made for them. So. Okay. We're gonna okay. have to be coming soon, and then the sash too. So, for the A mom, okay, you're gonna have us looking right, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get you know, I'm trying to get it right. You no, know, nah, that's that's fine. You, I mean, as long as you're heading the right direction, man, we can't ask for really nothing more. Yeah, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, and I'm gonna tell you this: I don't know how much you're gonna charge, but you know, I'm gonna get the deal anyway. Right, right, because you fam. Yeah, you. Yeah, fam. my father. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Try to get as low as you can, man. <laughs> I will, man. I'm gonna, you know. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to make it low, man. Okay, okay, <clears throat> okay, brother. But I'm um I, I might be able to get back in later. How long does the call last? Till eleven, uh, right? 
Yeah, to 11, but it doesn't look like anybody's on, so I had some stuff from the Constitution. I'm, that's why I'm recording it, uh, so oh. everybody can everybody can check it out, you know, whenever they get some time. Okay, well, um, yeah, do that, and that that's a good idea. And I, I, everything goes straight, man. I just I wish I could be on the call with you, man, but I got to get this phone situation straight, man. Okay, no, nah, man, no, nah, man, handle your biz. You know we're gonna link up later, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Okay, bro. Well, um, yeah, you want me to hit you back tonight or something? Uh, yeah, hit me back tonight. About what time? Uh, I should be free. I got some stuff I'm dealing with. Uh, you know, the remaking of the crown and everything. Uh, yeah. Ar- around eleven thirty your time. Eleven thirty my time. Yeah. Okay, now I'm real punctual. I'll be calling you at eleven thirty my time. Okay, okay. Yeah, it'll be at eight thirty my time. Okay, okay. I appreciate All right, brother you, brother. All right, brother okay. Raziel, Cosmos and Wadu. Okay, Wadu, Cosmos and All right, all right. Let me proceed. Um this is President Wurhutha Nudimud Kahagadul L. And um, and I guess this will be a little bit of a um, a solo reading out of the Constitution of the United Nawabi Nation of Moors. Um, we've been having some talks about actually improving the Constitution where the president doesn't have so much power because of what happened um, maybe about two months ago where we had an individual um, having too much control of over the nation's funds. So uh, that individual has been removed legally because he was a self-appointed chief. And, um, you know, my peers actually voted for me, people who are active in the nation. Um, if you're listening to this and and you're a citizen of the United Nawabi Nation of Moors under... Um, uh, under Asaru, who is the self-appointed chief, who is never even recognized by the nation, uh, and if you want to get involved, um, you could reach us at eight five five eight four nine one seven nine nine extension four is for general inquiries, and extension zero is for the uh, Holy Tabernacle Ministries. Hey, brother Tahuti, what's going on? Hey, brother Rahubat. Hey, Rahubat, bro. How's your day been? It's been going pretty good. Steady. We went to the movies, uh, me and my family. My family and I. Oh, okay. What, uh, what, what flick did y'all catch? We went and seen uh, that Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, my bad. Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, Far From Home. Oh, yeah. I've seen previews on that. Uh, was it good? Yeah, it was good. It was pretty good. It would have been better if we seen it in 3D, but we just didn't have the funds for it because movie prices nowadays is ridiculous. Yeah, it's almost like 20 bucks a head now to get in. Nah, we go to the matinee. What makes it a whole bunch cheaper? We spent right, like right. 29 dollars. Yeah, it's like seven dollars a piece, and all of us went. So it's like four of us. It's 29 bucks plus tax. Oh, okay. Well, that's actually not too bad. You you kind of played it smart and waited to the matinee to take the whole fam, you know? Hell yeah. Gotta you know <laughs> how to catch those bills. <laughs> right, right, right. We got to be smart about our money, man. It's Moors. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep, yep. Trying to do a nation. Exactly, exactly. So you, you got the AMOM, the... Um, the study one, right? You said you received it the other day? Yes, sir. Oh. I received it Monday. Okay, okay. Excellent, man. Excellent. I'm glad you got your book. Um, it's only me and you on the call right now. I don't know if other people are going to join, but um, I'm recording this call because I want to put it up on the Internet uh, for people to listen. And, you know, there's, there's people who could have joined the nation under Asaru. Mm-hmm that are actually legally part of the nation, but they don't know what's going on because he ostracized everybody and just wanted power for himself. 
So yeah. this is yeah. So this is kind of like an outreach to people who joined the nation, which has got to be over a hundred people um, to let them know the nation's still here. We're still running, but we had to remove the fraudster, the you know the sap, the self-appointed president. So um, yep. yep. So I wanted to um, start this call off. I'm, I'm gonna put you on mute real quick, but I wanted to start this call off with the with the pledge of allegiance to to our flag. I'm going to read it in Nuwabic first cuz that's the national language and then I'm going to uh translate it into English. All right. So Ama Abgemu Tahuth Safuna Zur Gadush Manuf Anderu Mawuti Zur uh Yakufin Ama Asheru Zita Ur Ila Pa Ganusat Shil Monu Monu Nauna Dek Nawasat Weloina Ila Haza Sabub Ahmelu Rusi Pug Atla Kar Garur Antero Lia Harus Zur Tahum Kul Karfi Haza Adzum Weloi Kalu Hau Zur Zadug Lia Yanukud Dek Karathum Muladuhum Hagoyat Ila Haza Sabu Nuki Sofa Argedu Jedi Hayu Ama Abgemu Tahuth Haza Safon Zur Gadush Danun Anderu Mawuti Makluset Zur Tamuet Kar Hira. As I stand beneath our sacred and holy flag, I vow loyalty and obedience as I watch it fly to the laws of our constitution that governs our nation. To this cause I hold my head up high. With pride I pledge to protect and defend all within this great nation, both family and friend to ensure that all have their equal rights. To this cause, I will lay down my very life. As I stand beneath this sacred and holy seal, I vow loyalty, sincerity, and integrity with zeal. All right. And then I wanted to read out of the Constitution, Statute 11, um, which is called Protection, Section 1. It says, We... Yamasi tribe of Native Americans, the United Nawabi Nation of Moors, have the inalienable right to take the necessary means within our own laws as he or she sees fit to be secure in our beings as well as our property, families, friends, and personal effects. This also pertains to our inalienable right to keep and bear arms on our beings as well as on our own property. You know, and I read that because I know that we're about to make some modifications um, to the Constitution uh, via via votes and motions. So um, that gives us that that within our own Constitution, where it says we have the inalienable right to take the necessary means within our own laws, as he or she sees fit, to be secure in our beings as well as our property family, friends, and personal effects. Now, what happened with the German, with the Asaru, the German, um, we didn't feel secure with him. You know, it says to be secure in our own being, so we didn't feel secure with him. That's why, let me unmute your mic, Tahuti. Uh, we didn't feel secure with him being the head of the nation because of all the secrecy and compartmentalizing that he did amongst the citizenry. So that is um that we can't grow a nation that way. Um so that's why we want to kinda balance out the power between all three branches of government. Um so the legislative, the pre the executive branch and the judicial branch can all be evenly balanced because if 
if I bring somebody into my cabinet, but they also have legislative powers in the legislative branch, then that's two out of the three branches of government that I can control myself. And I don't even want that power. I know a lot of people would, but I don't want that power because it's about us and not me. You know, we need to learn more French. We need to start saying we, we, instead of I, I. So um, in that aspect, when we look at the Constitution, it, it was bred for us. It's got to be written for us and, you know, and nobody else. So when we talk about the first, I think it's the first nine statutes, truth, justice, peace, um, freedom, so I'm going through the book, freedom, love, uh, joy, unity, success, and law. Um, those are the, just the nine, like I say, the nine links that will keep us all connected within this nation. Um, so when the Constitution is modified and motioned on, uh, probably within about a month or two while we get everything set up uh, and get the clan mother in here. Um, hopefully it's to everybody's liking and and we could just move forward as a nation. Uh, we're small now, but the things that we got going on in the background are pretty, are pretty big. Um, so, but this is also a, a, a call to let the people who already joined the nation uh, under the self-appointed president now that he he is no longer recognized that you know we're still up and kicking we haven't gone anywhere um, we're you know we're not pulling any frauds um, the funds that the nation collects also in the orders and AEO and AMOM it's all visible uh, to the citizenry and to the public um, so rest assured that you know we're not swindling your money like other organizations are doing lately and have been doing, I guess, for a long time, especially the more Science Temple of America. Um, that you can you can place your confidence in us. Of course, we have to earn your respect and your confidence, but you can place your confidence in us that uh, that we're handling things correctly. And um, anyway, this is about the Constitution. Let's head back to the Constitution and let me read uh, statute 11 section 2 also called protection we the United Nawabi Nation of Moors have the inalienable right to demarcate our traditional territories the definition of territory includes space air land and sea we the United Nawabi Nation of Moors must promote traditional analysis of traditional land rights in all our territories <clears throat> according to appendix 3 indigenous peoples earth charter human rights and international law number 39 traditional indigenous territory boundaries including the waters must be respected uh, 1994 draft of uh, rights of indigenous peoples states recognizing the urgent need to respect and promote the inherent rights and characteristics of indigenous peoples especially their rights to their lands territories and resources we derive from their political economic and social structures and from their cultures spiritual tradi traditions his histories and philosophies convinced that control by indigenous peoples over developments affecting them in their lands territories and resources will enable them to maintain and strengthen their institutions, cultures, and traditions and to promote their development in accordance with their aspirations and needs. So you can tell from reading that right there and by the UN that we control our own destiny. You know, we just, we have to abide by the law, you know, the United States and our own law until we live on our land. Um, and our new has already blessed us with land, so we'll be living there probably within a year or two. Um, so we have the right to live our own life, right? We have the right to acquire land, uh, practice our own language, our own culture, our own dress, 
um, you know, made treaties, whoever you want to make treaties with. Um, even when recognizes this, but you have to be a distinct group of people. You you know, you, you can't be saying that we want land in America, but you think you're from Africa. That That doesn't work. You'd have to go over to Africa and ask them for land. But as me, I were in the Cherokee, so... Okay, there goes the Attorney General to the moon. Yeah, man. Shoot. Bye, bad, everybody. Man. Hey, Rahul Bat. I'm so close to Alabama, man. It's it, it 819. And I ain't really had a call going until I saw the brothers with <laughs> I'm in there. Like, yeah, man, like I'm so close to the Alabama line. It's, it's 819 right here where I'm at, man. I would have been there. Well, that would have been oh, okay. Time. No, no, that's okay, man. Because we we tape we're taping this one uh, to make it official, uh, so people know kind of know what's going on. We're not going to tape every national call because uh, we're going to be speaking about things that just don't need to be uh, in the public. But you know, when we when we interface with the public like this, then uh, if we got a message or something that we want to send out as the United Nawabi Nation of Moors, then. You know, we could use this platform to do it. Um, so basically, I was just reading out of the Constitution about the the Human Rights uh, Declaration back in 1994. I know it's right. finalized now, you know, but when the Constitution was written by the uh, by Dr. Malachi Z. York L., um, it was still in draft form. So I was right. just kind of reading that and, and going over that we have the right legally basically to determine our own futures, right? Um, I'll I'll repeat it since uh, you came on the line, Attorney General. So it says, recognizing the urgent need to respect and promote the inherent rights and characteristics of indigenous peoples, especially their rights to their lands, territories, and resources, which derive from their political, economic, and social structures. Hey, clan mother, how you doing, Mott? I'm well. How are you? I'm sorry, you guys. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, where was I here? Which derive from their political, economic, and social structures, and from their cultures, spiritual traditions, histories, and philosophies. So, if you, I mean, if you're an indigenous people, you have already have that in place, and you have your land, and you're a distinct group of people. I mean, this law pretty much pertains to you. Therefore, it pertains to us. So, you know, I don't, I don't understand why other groups just can't get it together. You know, you know, do what we doing. Do what the Attorney General Tara Moon got us doing, like looking up DNA. You know, bringing different people on the line to explain DNA, RNA, and haplogroups and migrations and you know somebody to really get down into the science and then also individuals are able to look up their own birth records from their own individual families you know and stop you know stop saying you're from Africa just because you're you're romancing about you know ancient Egypt I mean yeah we are the Egyptians came over here too though right there's like in Arizona they got Egyptian artifacts that were in the Grand Canyon that was found in 1913, and anybody on the internet can pull up that article. So, as well as the Phoenicians, you know, they've all traveled to this part of the world too. So, um, but anyway, any people are free to think about themselves as they wish, but without any evidence, uh, I would say it's pretty hard to convince somebody that you are a distinct group of people. Uh, but not to raise any controversy here. Um, you know, as I was reading uh, Statute 12, section no, actually, uh, Statute 11, Section 1, there's also a phrase that I would like. Now, I'm talking about modifications to, uh, to the Constitution. So um, I think I want a motion here uh, for a phrase that, could be a little misleading, right? So section one, it says, we, 
Yamasi tribe of Native Americans. I don't mind the Yamasi part, but the Native American part, I do, because uh, native just means you're born here, right? So the colonists, the uh, the the conqueror that came over here, I mean, he's native. His children are native too, right? Because he had children that were born on this land through conquest and usurpation. Um, but he is never going to be indigenous. Never. He will never be indigenous to this land. So I I propose to replace Native American with Indigenous American. I'm, I just want to bring that to the floor. What y'all think about that? Well, on the river, I think that's a great idea. Or, and I say or, and, and not because it's, it's a better idea, but not, but however, if it'll be easier, let, let's say if it's easier for you to, like, when we're getting it done, um, mm-hmm. maybe if we define it, but I, I'm like you, though, man, I, I, I'm not real comfortable with that word native, but I know sometimes, I know you've seen them, too, in um, different legal forms. They'll define what they mean by the word native. Um, sometimes oh, it's within oh, yeah. the text. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In the statute. So whichever itself, way that'll be yeah. easy. Yes, sir. So, okay. Yes, whichever way will be easiest. But I'm kind of like you. I don't. I really don't like the word because the the, the tenses of it is really what what makes the difference. Um, and we know uh, Native Americans. Some you might have. <laughs> You might as well call yourself Indian or, or Negro or <laughs> black or colored. A lot of times we use that word native. Right, yeah, I agree. Because it's like you always say, it's, it's, it's still evidence of a paper genocide. Right, 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 right. Yep, we understand that link, you know, you know what I mean? Colored, Indian, Negro, black, African American, and whatever else they're going to come up in 10 or 15 years, it'll be something different. Like, I think that word needs to be dealt with. Yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> yep, yep, I, I agree, man. Does, does anybody else have anything to say about the, the issue? Nope. Okay, nope. we got... Okay, Clan Mother Mott. Okay, we we might have lost her for a second. All right. All right, I had to take it off mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hands are um, I don't have any disagreements with that. Okay, okay. All right, we'll go ahead and uh move on to the next subject or the next issue that I wanted to bring to the floor today, um, and it has to do with another modification um, to the Constitution on the executive branch. Uh, Give me a second to to find it. Uh, Let's see. Uh, nope, that's desecration to our flag. Oh, I also, well, this is kind of out of left field, but I also, um, we need to make a page on our website that kind of, um, well, not kind of, that kind of exposes people who are pulling frauds, like Asaru. Uh, he need to go on that list because um, who knows who he's still telling he's the chief. Um, who knows how much money he could have swindled people for. Um, you know, because I know in our experience that the money that he took from us, he didn't spend it where he said he was going to spend it. It was always an excuse. It was always... 
you know, oh, you know, we don't need a temple. The temple's inside your body. You know, stupid um, remarks like that. Um, and also, um, well, that that's actually against one of our statutes. Uh, let me let me read that. Let me let me read that for the record. Um, impersonating the Maku. Uh, I forgot. All right, give me a second. I forgot what statute that was. Oh, statute 19. Okay. So I'll go. I'll get in the statute 19 right after I read provision. Oh, okay. There's also okay. We need to read section 10 too because it talks about provisions for changing the constitution. Uh, so part seven. A statute 19 is titled misrepresenting the Maku the Supreme Grand Master now we know the Supreme Grand Master is the master of all the lodges okay so section 12 no person shall be a representative in any form or fashion for the Supreme Grand Master unless appointed by the Supreme Grand Master anyone falsely posing as a representative or declaring his or herself a spokesperson for the Supreme Grand Master as a citizen of the United Nawabi Nation of Moors or as a citizen of any state or as a Grand Master or Grand Matron of any state thereof shall have their passport revoked and will no longer be a citizen of the UNNM so there was actually uh, a situation that transpired uh what was it, about a month and a half ago where he where he tried to call the book publishing company and tried to stop printing of a certain book uh right there he already broke part 7 section 12 so i would like to bring to the table that he showed he he can't be a citizen according to the law he can't be a citizen cuz it says thereof shall have their passport revoked and will no longer be a citizen of the UNNM. So I don't know how, y- how y'all feel about that, but I, I, I feel pretty strongly about it since after what he did and, and how much money he took from people, uh, from hard-working moors and people who put their trust in him. So... But we can put that off till later. Uh, if, uh, I, uh, I, I kind of say that go without saying. <laughs> yeah, because it, 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 it says it right here. He's like he he tried to impersonate and tried to shut down the printing of a book. I mean, that's that's a pretty serious offense in itself. And he was trying to tell them that he was the chief, which is another offense. And and he will no longer be a citizen of UNM. So I guess the law says it right there. So Saru could never be a citizen of the UNM. Well, I mean, he was already operating on a fraud anyway. So. Right, yeah, he was never elected. Uh, he was a self-appointed president, which is illegal in a democracy. You can never do that in a democracy. You have to have a vote. So, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's too many strikes against uh, that guy. But uh, again, he did it to himself. Uh, no one forced it upon him, you know. Um, so, okay, well, well, we got this on record, so we'll I'll, I'll keep a note of that. Um, is there anything else somebody wanted to bring to the floor? Like any? issue from, you know, from any of the government officials on the line. Okay, because I don't, I don't want to hog the floor if uh, someone else has something they want to say. Okay, all right. We'll go on to the next. Uh, I, I don't want to say it's an issue, but uh, I was kind of thinking um, about our form of government. Now, do you think we should have a 
uh, like a hybrid of a democracy theocracy? Or should we just go with a democracy? Mm-hmm. The, the etymology of that word itself kind of troubles me, even though we was to do it. I mean, okay, uh, like let's say this thing. Uh, let's say said geography. Well, at that point, then we know who's ahead of that. Then mm. it'll be up to the Makus and the rest of us to just dispense justice based upon those particular principles. I think that I think that sounds better than be more crafty. That's just my opinion. So I smell what you're stepping in right now. Okay. Okay. Because I would have to do more research on it. I kind of looked it up briefly. Um, so I don't know. I did, that's why I wanted to kind of bring it out and, and get your guys' opinion on it. Because uh, I'm, I'm thinking like one of those, one of those Muslim states, you know, like, uh, like I don't know, Pakistan or um, uh, Saudi Arabia. I think those are. Theocracy. That's why I said theocracy and mixed in with democracy because we got to have votes. You know, we still have to exercise the will of the people and what they want. And hopefully, what they want is aligned up with the Alahum and Anu, and everything will be blissful. But, um, but that was kind of like my, you know, my thoughts on that. Um, I hear so. you. Okay, okay. All right. And uh, Matt Cool, everybody probably going to have to fall off because I'm, I'm paying attention, but I'm, I'm on the truck and I'm getting trained too, so I, I'm, I'm here, but I'm not all the way here. Okay. And I'm not able to really give you my full attention. Okay, okay, so, no problem. Um, we can continue this. Uh, well, you can hop on next week and uh, – We'll just continue it, but you know we'll talk offline and um, and uh, you know continue to, to put the nation on the right track, uh, so we got so we can accomplish all of our goals and uh, and get to where we got to get to, man. If, and, and if there's a prophecy, well, there's many prophecies, but the one we got to fulfill is the people got to have their own land, and they got to be living there. So anyway, I don't want to hold you up, uh, Terra Moon. You have a good night, man, and uh, I'll get with you tomorrow. Okay, man. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. Why do? Why do everybody? Bye. All right. Um. I think. Well. Kind of want to read statute nineteen section one about executive power. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Let me go ahead and read this. All right. So. Part 6, Statute 19, Executive Power, Section 1. The executive power shall be vested in the Supreme Grand Master uh, of the Yamasee Tribe of Native Americans, the United Nawabi Nation of Moors. The governing body, the Grand Master, choosing the Grand Master and the Grand Matron and the qualifications for becoming Grand Master or Grand Matron. Section 2. The governing body will decide who will be Grand Master and Grand Matron of each city and state. The person having the best qualifications shall be the Grand Master or Grand Matron. The, su- the Supreme Grand Master may determine the time of choosing the Grand Master and the Grand Matron and the day on which they shall take their respective positions in our nation. Their duty is to always be responsible and to uphold the laws of our nation. Anyone who is an active citizen of the United Nawabi Nation of Moors at this time or at any time hereafter of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to the office of Grand Master and Grand Matron. No person shall be eligible to that office if they are not 18 and have not been three years a resident within the United Nawabi Nation of Moors and speak the language of those they govern. Um, section three is the power to try and judge Grand Master and Grand Matron. I'm not going to read that. 
Da-da-da-da. Uh, oh, yeah. I also want to read uh, Section 10. Provisions for changing the Constitution. The state shall propose amendments to this Constitution or on the application of the governing body through a convention which, in either case, shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution when ratified by the Supreme Grand Master. Other modes of ratification may be proposed by the Supreme Grand Master, providing that no amendment which may be made prior to that year shall in any matter affect the rest of the statutes or sections. A proposal to amend the Constitution must be approved by the Supreme Grand Master. An amendment becomes law when the Supreme Grand Master approves it. So, well, I guess how I feel about Section 10 I kind of feel like this should, I mean, there's ratification, which is just a process of voting. How are you going to count the votes? How are you, you going to have a hearing to hear the votes? You know, the whole process of actually collecting votes. Um, I don't like the way it's only the Supreme Grandmaster, which is the president. Also, we need to change the Supreme Grandmaster to the president. And the Supreme Grand Master only goes with the orders. So, yeah, the way I see it is, is, is too much power for the, for the, for the uh, president to just make up new modes of ratification when he wants. And the ratification must be approved by the Supreme Grand Master. So it's, it's just too much power going on there for one person. And that, I, I feel like that's... Yeah, it, it's just too much power going on for one person, and I get it under Dr. York back in that day and time it was necessary, but in this day and time it's it's not. So um, maybe when we start having modification hearings, um, we can kind of pick this apart and uh, make sure it's evenly balanced for, for everybody because uh, the legislative also needs – the supreme, I mean, the the clan mother should also have a say in the ratification process and um, to change the constitution. So I don't know if anybody else has uh, anything they want to say about that. All right, all right. Um, let's see. We went over misrepresenting the Maku. I think that's all I wanted to bring to the floor today. Um, I think the biggest thing I wanted to get across was um, this is recorded. We're going to put this out on our YouTube channel and on our website and kind of let people know that, you know, things are happening. So if you, you know, like I was saying earlier, I'm going to echo it again. If you join the nation under the self-appointed president of uh, Amun, uh, Saur Amun Ray, uh, I forgot the brother's whole name, but um, that was not legitimate. In the, in the government, the nation, the country does not recognize any time that he ever sat in the presidential seat because this is a democracy. You have to, it has to be a vote. has to be a vote. You cannot just put yourself there because you saw an opportunity that no one else was taking, and so you just sat down in the seat. You know, um, all the works that he performed for the nation belong to the nation. Uh, I believe under Statute 15, copyright. So anything that he's done, he worked for the nation. So that belongs to us too. So um, with that said, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. Um, before we wrap it up here, I'll give somebody an opportunity to speak. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you to Hootie. Thank you, uh, Ma'at, clan mother. 
um, for attending today. And um, in the future, I'll let you know what got, I'll let you know what calls are going to be recorded and which ones aren't, uh, depending on what we're having a hearing about. Um, but as far as it goes today, this conference call has ended. Uh, meeting adjourned. Wadu. Wadu. Wadu.